This is Impact Wrestling superstar Jordan Grace, and you're listening to Count It Out with Mike and Tyler. Well, we are live, pals, and welcome to another edition of the Bill After Sealed of Approved Counted Out with Mike and Tyler. My name is Tyler. Mike is busy being super dad today. He's worked late last night. He's got the kids today, and he's uh, got school tonight. He's a busy man, but I think that I've found a great substitute for Mike today. You've heard our guest as one of the voices of professional wrestling for the last 10 years. He's called Royal Rumbles, WrestleManias, Bound for Glories. You can see him every Thursday night at 8 p.m. doing the play-by-play for Impact Wrestling. Tom Hannafin. Tom, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I wish Mike was here so we could, you know, have the full team together. But, you know, I don't know, maybe your cats or something like that will make an appearance. I'm say. sure. I'm sure that Lucy and, and Max, the dog, they always do their run ins. It's a, the counted out staple. Uh, you would not be the first one to, to witness that again as well. Um, Tom, we got you on today. I got to talk about what we're all excited about here in Ontario. Uh, Impact Wrestling is coming back. Windsor, Ontario, March 24th, 25th. We've got Sacrifice. How excited are not only yourself, but the entire Impact roster to come back over and, and to this side of the border? It's a long time coming. It's really, really exciting. It's been three years since Impact held an event in Canada. And I know personally seeing companies like WWE who regularly work in Canada and then AEW recently made their debut in Canada. All I've been thinking about is when is the wrestling company that whose parent company is based in Toronto, Anthem, we got to get back. And to hear this announced, it made me so, so happy. Uh, it sounds like the response already from the community in Windsor and just Canadian fans all together has been phenomenal. Tickets really flew out the door the second that they went on sale. So um, from what I understand, like you, you get them while they're there because there's not, not a ton left at impactwrestling.com. Yes. So I'm just thrilled to hear what the response is. And I don't believe I've performed in Canada on a wrestling show since 2019. So I, I can't wait for this. Uh, I think the wrestling fans in Canada are phenomenal. And for Impact to be back on Canadian soil, it's just so special. I think it's going to be great. Uh, and I know at least for our boss, uh, Scott Demore, it's a real easy commute there in Windsor. So he's excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Scott's got a great history uh, with Border City Wrestling and Windsor. Some of the greatest wrestlers have come out of that. A little known fact is, um, now I could be mistaken on this, but I am pretty sure that the only independent wrestling show that The Rock ever did was in Windsor with uh, with Scott Demore's Border City Wrestling. So rich yeah. history coming there. I'm kind of happy that we're seeing them come to Windsor instead of the Toronto area. Nice change. It's going to put a couple extra hours on my drive but it's worth it to come for impact wrestling. When you guys see the ticket sales, you mentioned they're, they're flying out of control. You know, I, I had my mortgage come out the same time tickets came on sale. So unfortunately <laughs> I'm not getting the VIP tickets that I was hoping to get, but I will be there. Um, does that get you guys more excited to come over and, and, and just get in front of that Canadian crowd, knowing just how ready we are for you guys? It's exciting to be in front of the Canadian crowd, but it's also really encouraging for Impact Wrestling altogether because also uh, this past Bound for Glory pay-per-view that we did was the highest attended event for Impact Wrestling in three years. So, you know, there's a pattern here. You can see, obviously, it's our first time back in Canada in three years. There are so many things that have happened to Impact Wrestling over the last four years. Obviously, the birth of AEW meant a hit to Impact Wrestling uh, in terms of their production department and some talent as well. And then the pandemic hit. 2020 crushed a lot of people around the world, and especially it really affected the wrestling business. I lived that with WWE and the Performance Center and the Thunderdome, so I know what that feels like, but very, very different for Impact Wrestling. And there's the perennial question of was Impact Wrestling going to survive that pandemic? Now, for it to be 2022 and me only having been a part of the company for a year, one thing that's been important to me is seeing the growth and progress of this company. Is this moving in the right direction? So when you see those types of numbers, Bound for Glory being the highest attended event in three years, 
tickets flying out the window for the return to Canada for the first time in three years. There's mile markers that Impact Wrestling is achieving towards something special. And it's just that incremental growth. And I'm really, really happy and, and honored and humbled to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And you know what, though, it's not a surprise to me to hear that you guys are getting this great response and tickets and, and the attendance is going up because it's no secret to anybody listening to our show. We think that Impact Wrestling is putting on the best weekly television show in all of professional wrestling. You guys are firing on all cylinders, whether it's in the ring, storylines, surprises, a rotating door of, of talent coming in and out. What is it with impact now that that needs to get done to get them to that next level uh, so that we can all um, continue to experience the growth of impact together? Um, I don't know if, if that's my place to say. I'm just I just show up and I call the show. So I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to be a part of, uh, you know, the, the success going forward. So hopefully uh, that's something that is being figured out. And I know it is just knowing the, the staff at Impact Wrestling, Scott Demore, I mentioned everybody at Anthem, uh, you know, my executive producer, Josh Matthews, everybody works so freaking hard in this company. So I'm just happy to be a small part of it. But I, I think you touched on a lot of the reasons why it's such a good product right now, week to week. Not only are you seeing, you know, fresh faces from other places, maybe popping up for, you know, a residency or whatever you want to call it, but also you're seeing Impact Wrestling honor the things about itself that are unique to Impact Wrestling. Um, even something as small as, you know, recently on, um, Access TV, Impact Plus, Pay Per View. We brought back the uh, the taglines and the X factors that you saw once upon a time, and it gave me chills because I remember Mike Tanay reading this stuff off, and I always respected the homework and the information he had uh, as a great statistician. So now I'm trying to do right by you know those little staples of the broadcast, and then also it's bringing forward matchup types that we have seen in the past, but having them. You know, being part uh, important parts of our future is really cool. I love the Ultimate X match. Getting to call that every once in a while has been so much fun. Seeing the return of the King of the Mountain in the first ever Queen of the Mountain match, yeah. the anniversary was great. Things like the Call Your Shot Gauntlet, uh, Gauntlet for the Gold, all these individual little types of matches, even recent things like the Triple Threat Revolver. There are things that Impact does that nobody else does, and it's reminding fans of what's special to us because I think it's the immense challenge in wrestling is whether it's a specific type of match or a specific type of event how do you make it different than what other companies are doing and impact's been doing that for 20 years so my job and matthew raywalt what we try to do is remind you of the 20 years of history ingenuity change adaptability all those things that impact wrestling has been doing for 20 years Absolutely. And, and, you know, we're excited to have Impact come back. Uh, you mentioned for yourself personally, it's been uh, since 2019, since you've been over to the Canadian side to do some I wrestling, so. give or take. What are some of your favorite memories of coming over here from, from a personal standpoint of coming over to the Toronto area and, and, and getting to do some wrestling? Oh, God. I, first of all, I just love being in Toronto and I genuinely enjoy Canada. Like I love going to Canada and visiting. Um, I got to go to my first CFL game, as a matter of fact. And I was going to ask you about it, that, actually. I, dude, it was somewhat I'm a football junkie, so I've been dying to go for years. And like no one that I'm friends with in America is like, why are you watching this? And I was like, I watched the Grey Cup front to back uh hats off to the argonauts <laughs> beating the blue bombers i didn't think they would do that but they prevented the three p uh no I, I like being in canada a lot i love the pace of life toronto especially is a, a wonderful city i've never been to windsor so i'm excited about that uh i just think the fans are ravenous it's really really cool like they are into everything and then there's certain instances where you go to toronto or uh, montreal where you see you know they can turn a show on its head, no matter what your best intentions are. They're like, we're taking control and a baby face is a heel, a heel is a baby face. Doesn't matter what your storyline is. We know what we care about and, and they're there to support that. So I, I think it's really neat. For me, I, I'm pretty sure it was 2019. I'm pretty sure it was NXT TakeOver Toronto and a SummerSlam weekend all back to back. Yeah. I remember getting to call uh, Ty Dillinger versus Bobby Roode at NXT TakeOver Toronto. Uh, I remember getting to call um, a revival match. I want to say against DIY. Yeah, absolutely. Two out of oh three falls. God. God, that was so good. Um, 
And they had their uh, great matches also involving AOP. So, I mean, there are just so many great matches that I got to see from the Revival, especially. But in Canada, the response was amazing. They hit the heart attack at one point, and it's the place nearly went insane. So, we love, we love us some Bret Hart over here, for sure. You have to. You have to. <laughs> and uh, that SummerSlam event was also really, really cool. So, I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's just fun to be part of those moments. And then uh, being able to spread the word on Impact Wrestling internationally obviously we have a good following in the united states and a good following in canada but we have this fabulous international audience and we just want to make it clear it's like no we're we're here for the entire world which is awesome yeah you know we're gonna have to have you come back on for part two to sidebar into some football talk then because i <laughs> I'd, lo- I'd love to get your take on what you think of the cfl because i'm not a big cfl guy personally i i'm, okay. a, I'm, a, I'm an nfl or through and through go Bengals, uh, and i'm not a bandwagon Bengals fan either okay okay i've good. been I've been with them since 98, man. I've, I've been with the Bungles, all right? Okay. So, you know, last year was my year. We're, we're going to sneak in the playoffs this year. That's okay. But uh, that's going to have to be for another podcast. Uh, but any chance I can say go Bengals and who day, I'm all for it. So, <laughs> Well, you're not a bandwagon hopper like Renee Paquette. Uh, oh. so, no, I'm kidding. No, she's, she, no, like she moved there and she's like, oh, I love Cincinnati. And then now she's actually doing some work with the Cincinnati Bengals. So I'm like, this is super cool. Like she's yeah. she just embraces everything. When she moved to Vegas, she embraced the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Moved to Cincinnati, embraced the Bengals. Obviously, John Moxley is from Cincinnati, Bengals fan as well. So well, we uh, will... I, I love what she's getting to do with the Bengals. I think it's badass. As a uh, fellow Torontonian that she is as well, and, and a Bengals fan, we will happily accept her bandwagonness. And uh, I will be sure to tag her on Twitter so you get in trouble for this. <laughs> all right. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, we're going to keep on the Canadian theme here. You know that we're all going to be going crazy for our hometown boy, Josh Alexander, uh, especially in this area. We watch Josh come up from the from the very beginnings and, and to see what he's doing now. Josh is closing in on becoming the longest reigning Impact Wrestling World Champion. He is already a part of the longest reigning tag team champions of all time with Ethan Page. Is it time that the wrestling world starts looking at Josh Alexander as one of the greatest competitors to ever step inside of an Impact Wrestling ring? I don't know how they're not already. Uh, they should be, uh, considering some of the names that he's passing. Also, I think the really important thing getting to know Josh over the past year is how important the history of Impact Wrestling is to him, whether it's small things that he's doing with his gear here and there to pay homage to certain wrestlers over the years. I believe it was at Bound for Glory, or no, Slammiversary, excuse me, he wore Kurt Angle themed uh, tights. I thought that was awesome. The uh-huh. singlet looked great. And then, you know, even incorporating the Styles Clash into his offense, uh, an homage to AJ Styles. He is very, very in tune with the history of Impact Wrestling. He cares about it and it means a lot to him. It means the world to him to be the flag bearer for this company as the Impact World Champion. So I remember, you know, a couple of months ago seeing the names that he was passing and I was just blown away. Uh-huh. Sting. Uh, Samoa Joe, he had passed Moose's reign this past year, which I really do not want to uh, gloss over. That was very important for Impact Wrestling. Um, he's passed some legends like Kurt Angle. Um, obviously, he's passing AJ Styles. He's got his sights on Bobby Roode. It's just crazy to see what he's doing. He belongs in that pantheon of best Impact wrestlers ever. Absolutely. And in my opinion, he's one of the best pro wrestlers alive. And if people don't recognize that, then they need to tune into Impact Wrestling and see it for themselves. Yeah, you take a look at his body of work this year, you know, great matches with Jonah, PCO, uh, Suzuki, Alex Shelley, EY. Like, if he's not on everyone's top of the list for wrestler of the year, I don't know if you should be watching wrestling anymore, people, because he's the best. No, I agree. His match with Ishii was amazing. Alex Shelley and him had a phenomenal matchup. Um, Eric Young, Joe Doring, uh, just he continues to prove what he's capable of. And also his match uh, with Frankie Kazarian yes. was one of the best matches that I think I've ever gotten to call. And it was just phenomenal. Everything flowed. Everything just everything just made a ton of sense, uh, so to speak, from a broadcasting standpoint for us. You know, me and Ray Walt just sitting there and just getting to appreciate it. There's some matches where you just sit back and it calls itself uh, what he did with Kazarian at an overdrive. If anybody's not seen it, you can check it out on demand on Impact Plus. It's a fantastic match. Absolutely. And before Josh can come home with that championship, he's got, in what my opinion, might be his biggest challenge to date ahead of him. He's got Bully Ray. Um, Bully Ray's making it real personal now, as we saw at, uh, at the last event. 
how have you enjoyed watching this program build up and to see, you know, Bully Ray start to show his true colors now? And, and what does Josh have to do to to beat Bully Ray and, and take over that right top spot as the longest reigning impact champion of all time? I mentioned moments ago Moose and his title reign that came because he was willing to stoop to levels that nobody else would to become the impact world champion. He did that at the expense of Josh Alexander. He speared him right in front of his wife and son Mm -hmm. at bound for glory in 2021. And that's how he captured the impact world championship with a call your shot opportunity very eerily similar to what bully Ray is trying to do, except bully Ray is saying, Hey, you're, you're going to see me coming from a mile away. I'm going to call my shot. I'm going to shake your hand. He did all those things, but bully Ray is what he is. And I've said it on access TV once a snake, always a snake so that is what josh alexander has to contend with you and i were just talking a few moments ago about the who's who that josh alexander has faced however many of them have not made it deeply personal i would say people like eric young have made it personal but uh there there have been rivalries where it's been built on respect obvious tension of two competitors wanting to be the champion wanting to be the best this harkens back to what moose put josh alexander through and arguably Moose was the most successful at disrupting the psyche of Josh Alexander. This makes a ton of sense. The biggest strength and also the biggest vulnerability that Josh Alexander has in his life is his family. So if you can target that and you can make him uncomfortable and you can make him think about something other than wrestling you and beating you, you have a chance. And Bully Ray is one of the best ever when it comes to mind games, one of the best ever when it comes to stooping to levels that nobody else will. So Bully Ray's got a really good chance of becoming a three-time Impact World Champion come hard to kill because he's done a lot already to just make life very, very difficult for Josh Alexander out of the ring. That's right. And that is going to be on Friday, January the 13th, everybody. Make sure to check that out. I can't wait to see that match. And I know that the the card is going to be fantastic as Impact always puts together strong cards from top to bottom. I'd like to talk about you a little bit now, though, uh, for, for a minute here. What were some of the biggest differences and, and maybe challenges, not maybe not challenges, but just some of the biggest differences that you had to overcome, you know, coming out of that WWE system and going into impact wrestling? Um, I think it was just taking more chances. Uh, I think there were definitely some times in WWE where there's a there's a structure, there's a game plan, there's a uh, there's specific verbiage that you're supposed to use, obviously, and it's just the way that WWE likes to brand and market their product, their wrestlers, et cetera, that I was beholden to for a long time. So now it's having the opportunity to go out and just shake things up, try something different, uh, be a little bit more authentic to who I am as a person, but also adhering to what we've got to get done on a broadcast. Um, I get to, I, I get to work with Matt Raywalt, who, in my opinion, is one of the best color, com- color commentators in pro wrestling today. So he and I are legitimately friends, but we love to needle each other. So being able to do that, it reminds me a little bit of what I was able to do with Corey Graves and NXT and occasionally on Raw or SmackDown or something like that. Uh, I just love having that back and forth because I think that's what makes great wrestling commentary. If you look in the history of pro wrestling commentary, when you have that heel baby face combination in a two man booth, it does wonders for the broadcast. If you're able to, you know, get the audience really ticked off as the heel and then as the baby face really champion certain moments with great enthusiasm and emotion, uh, that's what we're out to do. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I've made uh, the right changes and hopefully people are, you know, uh, seeing how much I love this and how much I care about this because I am genuinely trying to uh, break old habits. Uh, some habits are good. Some things I learned from WWE, whether it be in wrestling or beyond, have helped me immensely and have made me who I am as a person, as a professional today. So I'll never forget about that. Always going to be grateful for that. But at the same time, there are things here in Impact that I'm just doing differently. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. And it shows. And, and I'm not saying this just to blow smoke up your butt here, but uh, I, I really do <laughs> well, think that I, I think you and Matt have been the commentating team of the year as far as I'm concerned. And I think having you on, on the Impact brand uh, really gives them a lot of credibility as well because you are so respected at what you do. Wow, well, well, you're very kind to say that. Um, man, anything that I can do to... You know, we were talking about before in terms of like ticket sales and what Impact Wrestling is doing going forward, you know, improving into the future. If I can be a small part of that, that means the world to me because, you know, being in WWE, you're a very small cog in a giant machine. Mm -hmm. So this is just a very different scenario for me. So being able to 
add anything and work with some phenomenal people. Like at the end of the day, man, I love the people I'm working with. The, the production staff is unbelievably accommodating and unbelievably helpful. Uh, they do amazing things. They're wonderful people just to be around, period. Um, I feel very, very comfortable with my executive producer, Josh Matthews. He is stellar at what he does. And I don't know if people give him the credit for that, that he deserves. And, and working with Scott Damore and the creative team, they're, they're clear, concise. We communicate very, very well. And I've really enjoyed everything that we put on TV lately. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's showing, like I, I said earlier, I think Impact has been the the television show of the year as far as I'm concerned. When all the votes come in, that's where mine's going for sure. Um, I do want to talk just a little bit about, about your past in the WWE, just because I think you've done a lot of incredible work. The one thing that I've always heard, and, and I'd like to hear it from somebody who actually was a commentator in WWE. I don't like to just read the internet and, oh, that must be true. Um, that's good of you. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I just think I, I like to hear it right from the people that were there. How hands on was Vince McMahon with you guys? Was he as much in the ear as you read about? Was he was he kind of a little overbearing there? Was he like, like just what was it like? I guess with with Vince on on the set is it as bad as everybody makes it out to be, or or was it kind of over exaggerated? Yeah, everybody's got their individual stories. I, I just had a very different relationship with him in that I always kept everything very very much professional and about work. So there weren't a ton of instances uh, off air where we were speaking, you know, frequently, you know, if whatever communication had to be done to take care of the, the, the task at hand that I was doing. And I think every commentator, whether you're a play by play guy or a color commentator has a different relationship and experience with him. I know that over the years, he's been very hands on with Michael Cole, that's well documented. He's been very hands on with a lot of heel color commentators, because that's something Vince channels very well. And uh, I think that's shown in a lot of different heel color commentators that you've heard over the last 10 to 20 years um, in a way that's Vince speaking through them. So there were plenty of instances where I was working with Corey Graves, JBL, uh, even King playing a heel sometimes, Samoa Joe playing a heel. It, it, it's more that person being worked and then understanding what's coming from Vince and what's coming th through that commentator and then how do you work with it? How do you accomplish it? It's like, oh, I can feel you going this way. You want me to hit this. And then how do I bounce this to my baby face color commentator? Or how do I accomplish that as the play by play guy? So um, I always had a good relationship with him. It was always very direct. And I don't know, I always, I always felt like we were taking care of business most yeah. of the time. Absolutely. I, I was really a big fan of the work that you did in NXT as well. You know, we talked about that great Toronto Appreciate show that. that you got to call. What were like the biggest differences with uh, working with Triple H and NXT compared to Vince with WWE? Um, I think it, it's well documented that with Vince, there were frequent changes and changes up until the, the last minute that a show went on the air, even into you know, the broadcast itself. So I got very used to that doing Raw and SmackDown that you could hand me no show and, you know, we would just run with it or you could hand me a show and that'd be great. Um, Triple H was just, uh, I don't know, I, I have very fond memories of working with Triple H because I appreciated um, what he what he meant to so many people on a personal level. And that's not to say anything negative about Vince's relationship with so many people, because that's also well documented how important he is to so many people in WWE and vice versa. Uh, Triple H, uh, I, I'll never forget, I remember doing an NXT, I think it was um, April 15th, 2020, exactly. And it was unfortunately a day where A, we're in the pandemic, we're doing an NXT in front of no fans. And uh, a lot of people were released that day. And um, I was working as a member of the announce team uh, staff with Michael Cole. So unfortunately, I had to do some of those phone calls for within our staff. So it was an extremely emotional day and for everybody, not just myself included. And I remember just, you know, Triple H coming up and saying, hey, like he was just checking on everybody because he knew it's like between the pandemic and then these budget cuts, obviously, that were happening out of necessity because of the pandemic. Um, he came over and asked, and he was like, how's everybody doing? And I just couldn't lie. And I was like, I, I was emotional. I was damn near in tears. And I was like, I'm not okay. And there's often the alpha male wrestling mentality, and that's every promotion that you work with. And he was good enough to just like pull me aside, talk to me for five minutes and just give me that space to, to breathe. So um, I think I definitely had a, 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 I'd say a more extensive uh, relationship with Triple H just because of the opportunities I was given on NXT were 
really special and they're just different in that you know it's not that they weren't special opportunities on raw and smackdown i'm getting to call freaking wrestlemania royal rumble summer slams money in the banks like you name it but with triple h and nxt that those were grounds for me to reinvent myself because i wasn't doing a good job and i needed to learn i needed to try new things and he gave me this stage to do that to do something really great with Corey Graves. Uh, I, I will never forget that as long as I live. So it's just apples to oranges. So yeah. <laughs> one flavor versus <laughs> another flavor of ice cream, so to speak. Absolutely. The The last question I want to ask about the WWE, and I want to, I want to finish it up with a couple more impact questions here. Uh, you mentioned working WrestleMania. How special and how big of a moment is that for you to be one of the lead announcers for, for a WrestleMania? Oh my God. Uh, the first one that I got to do, I was freaking out. Like <laughs> it was, uh, I got, I, I think I got informed about three weeks ahead of time that I was indeed calling WrestleMania because, um, Mauro Ronaldo's availability was in question. So I just didn't know because I was like the fourth man on SmackDown. I was like, Oh, they may, they might not have me even call any portion of the show. So I was prepared to accept that. And then they came back to me and they're like, no, you're calling all the SmackDown matches. Wow. So I about had a heart attack three weeks <laughs> at a time. And then, um, I'll never forget that gigantic ramp that was in Orlando for, uh, WrestleMania 33. I want to say, uh, I went out for the pre-show and it was me and Corey Graves calling the, the cruiserweight championship match. I think it was Austin Aries versus Neville. Yeah. Yeah. Now pack, I think pack, everybody yeah. knows what that is. Um, he and I walking down this gigantic ramp and they just sent us down the ramp uh, to no music because they're like, Oh, you don't have music and you just need to get down there physically. So like, there's no music and we're walking down this enormous ramp, which feels like the edge of the Titanic, this sea of people. And I'll never forget it. And he and I just laughing and like looking at each other, like, holy crap, like, look at this. This is super cool. And just getting to do that with him. Uh, if I didn't get to do that with Graves on the kickoff show, I never would have calmed the hell down yeah. and actually done the show. Um, and hopefully people thought it was good. <laughs> but <laughs> as the years went by, I got more accustomed to it as you do with anything, but you still never really get used to it it's still the biggest stage it's still this absolute spectacle and you know the entire world is watching it's one of those most important sports brands in the world one of the most important sports events in the world it's extra uh, extremely visible so uh you know you feel that pressure every single time and then you want to do right by the performers that are going out there and putting their bodies on the line trying to tell their stories and trying to have their wrestlemania moment so Hopefully we captured as many of those as humanly possible. And I'm just, you know, it's a, an amazing thing to look back on. I still have the, uh, the, the, the run sheet from that first WrestleMania because uh, internally it lists all the commentators that are on it. So I still have that. I have that. Oh, frame that's cool. Home. That's uh, super that's cool. A small piece of mess, uh, wrestling memorabilia that I actually do keep. Um, so th those moments I cherish. That that was the WrestleMania, I believe, where the Hardy Boys came back to. Is that one of the craziest pops you've yeah, ever heard like, in your life? Like so that, that's gotta that be was, insane to hear. That was a raw match, so I wasn't calling it, but you know, no one saw the Hardys all day. And then you hear that music hit and the place just absolutely erupted. It was super, super cool, man. Like even in the the belly of that stadium there in Orlando, just the reaction, it was it was unbelievable and then the match itself was freaking crazy yeah. so um I, I always think that stuff is fascinating because you I, I guess the story is that they kept them hidden most of the day so there is communication with those that need to know of like oh hey here's what we're going to do in the match etc 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 but then there's certainly plenty of things that if it's a secret like that you kind of have to go with out there and communicate through the referee all those things so i can't imagine how they pulled off uh, the match that they all pulled off everybody included in that match it was phenomenal um but yeah that that situation was crazy yeah that's a, that's one of the craziest reactions i've ever heard in wrestling i've been watching wrestling for 30 all 38 years of my life so um I, i'd like to ask you a question though about some of the work that you do um can you kind of take us through a show day and, and kind of the preparation that you do uh who are you talking to what kind of notes are you taking what kind of work goes into the the final product that we see you put out on tv I think, uh, especially now here in Impact, I think I speak to like everybody in the freaking building when it comes to TV days. Um, and hopefully that's not annoying, but like I'm really, really meticulous with putting together the structure of the show. That's the first thing you have to worry about. 
uh, if you're doing play by play, and even if you're doing color commentary, but especially play by play, I'm an extension of the production truck, and I'm an extension of the executive producer, Josh Matthews. So he and I, and the production staff need to make sure we're all on the same sheet of music, so to speak, whether it be the the traffic of the show or what ads we're going to communicate, how the on camera is going to go, placement of certain things, graphics, etc., within the show. So that I spend the bulk of the day making sure that's good. All my notes in terms of statistics, storylines, etc., that's done usually a week or two in advance. And we have a fabulous statistician named Garrett Kidney who helps me put together everything and really helps me get in depth. And we combine on our notes and hopefully get that out there and, and explain the significance to the audience because we were kind of talking about it before. There's 20 years of history in Impact Wrestling. So I feel it's extremely important to continue to bring that forward, not just call what's happening in the moment and explain the significance of what's happening in our history. So that's always really cool. Obviously, I'm speaking to Matt Raywalt throughout the day in terms of, hey, you know, what do you think about this? There are certain stories where I'm like, how should my character feel? How should my character react? How should your character react, etc. cetera? Um, getting with creative, Scott to more in terms of where they want us to go with something or not go. That's always really important. Um, having the gift of forethought uh, or foresight, excuse me, in certain situations, but not wanting it in others. Talking to talent in terms of what are you going to do in your match to, hey, what's a story point that might be significant? What's a shoot detail about your life that maybe I can bring forward and explain. Um, I remember it was, oh, I want to say uh, it was Cincinnati earlier this year. We had a live show. Oh, I'm blanking on the name of the show. It was Under Siege, Under Siege. And I think that was the night Josh Alexander defended the Impact World title against Ishii. Uh, the day before, Josh had been in a car accident, like a serious car accident, driving from Canada to Cincinnati in this brand new truck that he just bought himself. Two days after he bought it, it gets totaled. And uh, he and a passenger were fortunately not in serious, uh, you know, anything serious in terms of an injury. They walked away from it on skate. The car was banged up, but they were about halfway in between, uh, I think, leaving Toronto and then getting to Cincinnati. So you can imagine oh, I've got to get to a show, the panic of it, how his family was feeling. And then, by the way, the next day you have to wrestle Ishii. So, yeah, the, the car so, crash might have been more gentle than Ishii. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I'd seen him the day before, and then I was like, oh, how are you, are you doing? And he was like, oh, my God, it's been a wild day. So, like, that was my whole story for his entrance because, like, how does this not tell the story of the the metal, the the grit, the resolve of your world champion? that he had a freaking car accident the day before and he's still here and he's he's doing okay and I know his family was concerned about him I've told you about how important his family is to him and that's been a big part of his story on air so it's finding those little details that if you don't ask sometimes it won't come through and there's some talent that are awesome about giving you information um, some don't because they're in the mix of a million other things shooting a pre-tape getting their match together it might be the last thing they think about so I always try and make sure the lines of communication are open to everybody on the staff in the building all day long and one thing i learned from michael cole and wwe is i plant myself at the commentary desk in the arena which uh was new to a lot of people in impact wrestling from what i understand uh, no fault to anybody else but it's just that you know where i am all day and if you have a question of where i am it's 99 percent of the time it's right there i'm not hard to find that's smart that's really smart actually um so hard to kill it's going to mark your one year anniversary with impact wrestling. I I'm going to speak here in a hopeful sense and, and you can answer it or you cannot answer if you want, but are we going to see you in impact wrestling for a while? Are, are you signed up for, for quite a bit or is it going to be an extension time? Because I don't want to see you leave impact wrestling. I think that the work you're doing is fantastic. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. The, that is the hope uh, going forward. I, I really don't like to put anything out there publicly in terms of uh, my contract or anything that's between me and impact wrestling but that's the hope right now is just making sure that i'm part of the company for years to come that was something that was expressed once i signed on last year uh, they gave me an opportunity when uh i wasn't really sure if i wanted to even be back in professional wrestling and dipping my toe back in the water and hearing that there was need and want from impact wrestling and then getting to learn uh what everybody there was all about it's extremely important to me. And, um, you know, like I said, there's certain things that I just keep public, you know, keep personal and other things that are, are public, but my journey uh, personally and professionally over the last two years, I'm not where I am today without impact wrestling. So I, I feel very, very strongly about my relationship with them. So yeah, that's the hope hopefully for a number of years to come um, with impact. 
That's great. That's what I like to hear as a fan, at least. Um, <laughs> uh, with 2023 coming up, who should we be keeping an eye on on that impact roster? Who do you think is going to is bound for a breakout year? Um, I, I feel it would be a discredit to say that he's not already broken out in a way, but speedball Mike Bailey, I think he's had a phenomenal year. Whether it's in impact wrestling, like every time I pull up social media, there's a promotion for a match. He's wrestling somewhere every single weekend. The man works hard, Um, but he already has broken out, in my opinion, this year in that um, him also debuting at Hard to Kill earlier this year, the same night as me. um, He hadn't been able to compete in the United States for five years. So he deeply cares about the opportunity that he has here in impact wrestling, and he's absolutely starred one of the best X division title reigns uh, in recent memory. And I know he's got his eyes on other gold with an impact. Um, so Mike Bailey, I expect to continue, but in terms of breakout, um, I think the reigning digital media champion, Joe Hendry has done some outstanding things in a very short amount of time. I will be completely honest. And I didn't know a ton about him uh, when he came to impact wrestling a few months ago. Uh, I've learned obviously through friends and talking about him and watching his old tape and talking to him. Uh, he's a great dude. And I think the reaction that he's getting, we're just scratching the surface with what Joe Hendry can be. So uh, I'm very excited to see what more he can do. And I, it's safe to uh, say you believe in Joe Hendry. I do believe in Joe Hendry. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I'm curious. There's some things that he says where I'm like, what did you say? And like, I'm just, I want to see where his story goes, but um, he's outstanding. And then uh, in the knockouts division, It's so hard to say because I think Jordan Grace has already broken out. I think Tasha Steele's had her breakout moment earlier in the year when she beat Mickey James for the Knockouts World Championship. So I might go with Tasha again in that I think Tasha saw a glimpse at the peak of the mountain and wants to get back to that, has a ton of ability, still has a ton more that she can do in professional wrestling and learn and add to her arsenal. So I'm very excited to see what she can do. But yeah, it's just so crazy to think. I mean, like the, the Impact Wrestling roster it, currently, from what I've seen, is stacked. Absolutely. And there's a lot of different people that have already broken out. Like, I don't need to tell you who Deanna Perrazzo is. I don't need to tell you who Taya Valkyrie is. Um, there's so many different women on this roster and men, especially, that can really contribute at a high level. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll say Giselle Shaw. That's the name I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Giselle Shaw makes a lot of sense to me as somebody who could win her first championship in impact next year. I I just had the pleasure to see her wrestle live a couple weeks ago against uh, a talent named Alexia Nicole, who Mm. uh, should be on everybody's radar. Uh, She's fantastic as well. And they tore the house down. I think Giselle is in for a huge year. And I think we could see some tag team gold coming to uh, the Bullet Club there, Chris Bay and uh, and Ace Austin. I, Boy, I think... the, the, you know, I, I had a hunch going into the Super Junior Tag League in New Japan Pro Wrestling, like seeing the field. I was like, they could do really, really well. And I think at the time we're recording this, they're 3-0. and Yeah. Um, I think the world of Ace Austin and Chris Bay, um, Chris Bay signed up long-term with Impact Wrestling. So I think they're just scratching the surface and also having that Bullet Club brand behind you just opens more eyeballs. It's never a bad thing. So and I, I think there's a real opportunity in the impact wrestling tag team division right now. I think there's a lot of tag teams that are intriguing and enticing, but Ace and Bay have a chance to take over in a meaningful way. Absolutely. You know, Tom, you've been so great with your time. I have two last quick questions for you here and, and we're going to let you on your way. Uh, the first one is um, for myself, I, I have tried to dabble into the world of professional wrestling commentary on the independent level a couple of times. Um, what advice could you give to some of the newer people getting into the wrestling commentary world that that would be helpful? Um, you don't have to know every single last move. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of different young Uh, broadcasters that have wanted to break into wrestling commentary. I love having those conversations. And the biggest thing that they hear is uh, that I hear from them is like, Oh, I've got to learn this move. I got to know this move. And it's like one of the biggest things that I learned from WWE was it's better to express the emotion behind what's happening or the importance of what's happening in a specific move or sequence in the ring than it is to know exactly the name of it. Um, There's people like Mara Ranallo who have this, unbelievable mind unbelievable rolodex of every last move ever he can do that stuff (laughs) he's one of one in the pro wrestling commentary world um there's not a lot of people that can do that so i don't want people thinking oh i have to 
know every last thing. Because when I got hired in WWE, I was 23, and I didn't know every last move. One of the biggest ways that I learned it was playing wrestling video games yeah. and going through <laughs> and you can pick moves for characters or something like that. And I'd go through and I'd watch the two dummies do it to each other. So that really helped me a lot, obviously watching tons and tons of content from multiple promotions for many years. But don't feel like when you walk in the door, you got to know every last thing. You're at that level trying to learn. As long as your enthusiasm and your emotion is great and you're there in the moment, you have to be the medium for the fan to what's happening in the ring. So as long as you have that same excitement and enthusiasm that undoubtedly you have sitting on your couch at home or whether you buy a ticket to an event, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. Uh, and, and the biggest thing that I took away from WWE is um, don't use 10 words when five will do. You might have a big, beautiful sentence in your head and you want to wax poetically something, but sometimes simplicity and being concise is really all you need. You just need to communicate information sometimes and not necessarily come up with the greatest quote ever. Some of the best pro wrestling calls ever were really, really short. You don't need to come up with something gigantic. So uh, less is more is always my advice. That's some fantastic advice. We appreciate that. And the last question I want to ask you, I, I like to end all my interviews asking this. When you take a look back at everything that you've done in your career, what are some moments that just make you smile? You know, it doesn't have to be your biggest accomplishments. It could just be something that you look back on and just makes you happy. It's like, wow, that's really cool that I got to do that. Uh, there, there have been so many things that I've gotten to be a part of. And I, I really don't understand how I wound up in this situation. I'm very grateful for every last one of them. Um, I think, you know, Kofi Mania is always going to stick out in my head. Um, you know, NXT TakeOver Dallas, Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura. You know, there's individual moments, individual matches, as I mentioned, Josh Alexander versus Frankie Kazarian from um, from Overdrive. Uh, also, I think it was No Surrender earlier this year, Jay White versus Alex Shelley. Uh -huh. One of the best matches of the year. If you haven't seen it, again, check it out on Impact Plus On Demand. Just being able to check things off my bucket list at this point. You know, this year I got to work in the 2300 arena in Philadelphia, I mean, right in my backyard. It's a city I grew up in. So, I mean, it, it means a lot to me to be able to accomplish all these things in wrestling. There's still things that I want to do. There's still things that I want to check off that list. But um, I, I think the thing that's always going to be the most important thing to me is those moments that aren't on air, just being able to you know, reconnect with people that I haven't seen in forever, whether that's been an impact wrestling or WWE, um, being able to aid in a moment, um, being able to do something significant for somebody else, um, whether that helps them professionally or personally uh, within this crazy world of pro wrestling. That's what really matters to me. Um, those are the things that matter at the end of the day. Um, if you do your job and hopefully you treat people well as often as you can, nobody has perfect days every single day. Um, that, that's the thing that, I st that sticks with me the most. And, um, you know, I, I cherish the relationships. Perfect. I can't think of a better way to end it there. Everybody, make sure you are checking out Hard to Kill on January the 13th. We look forward to seeing Impact Wrestling coming back to Windsor, Ontario, March 24th and 25th. Tom, I got a poutine and a beer waiting for you. Pick your brain a little more of that commentary advice if we run into you there, all right? <laughs> Yes, I'd have a pupper, so let's go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and uh, what else? We have beaver tails over here. Those are other Ooh, weird. Wait, that's a thing. That's a thing. Oh, we okay. We will Poutine. we will find each other in, in Windsor. Good for Canadian sure. beer and beaver tails. We we got to do this. Absolutely, man. Tom, is there anything that you want to plug social media wise before we let you go? No, check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Tom Hannifin, H-A-N-N-I-F-A-N. Um, if you're into Penn State football and you're also a wrestling fan, I do a podcast called Pater Day Penn State Football Show, which is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I am constantly doing stuff in the conventional sports world as well, whether it's digital media hosting, sports gambling, whatever. Um, if you're interested in any of that stuff, I can help you win or lose some money. I'm your guy. Uh, but seriously, I, I want to say thank you to anybody that's been a supporter or a fan of my work in professional wrestling for 10 years now. Like I just never could have imagined this career developing the way that it has. And it, it doesn't happen uh, without the support of a lot of people. Well, on that note, on behalf of myself and Mike, who couldn't be here, thank you, Tom, for joining us. You have been counted out.